there are tricks that I have practiced for literally three, four years before actually doing them in front of people. Welcome to another episode of Profoundly Pointless. My name is Nick. Our guest this episode is reinventing magic, creating never before seen tricks, selling out venues, and entertaining millions of people all over the world. We're going to talk about how you become a magician, the business of magic, and hidden secrets behind some of his tricks. The first part of this episode is more of a conversation, and then we'll get into some demonstrations that I just couldn't believe. I have to apologize, though. There's one or two sections where I just I couldn't get the video and the audio to sync up right, so subtitles are available. This is Card Magician Jason Ladani. Like and subscribe if you get a chance. Thanks for joining us. So do you remember your first trick? Well, yes, I do remember the first trick that was shown to me, uh, and that's why I'm here today, actually. Uh, so my older brother, who was a much older, he's 11 years older than me. So he wasn't the rivalry. He was like the hero, you know. He did that trick where there's four jacks that go into different apartment levels. This jack, this is the robber, goes into the first floor, the second floor, the third floor. And then one jack stays on the roof as the lookout. And then when the police come, you knock on the on the deck and all the jacks come off the top. And my brain just, you know, at seven years old, you're just learning how the world, you know, there's rules to the world. And he put those jacks in four different spots in the deck and there's no way that they could just end up on top like that. So something clicked in my brain and I said that the, I want this power. You know, this is this is what I want. And uh, I started learning from magic books and I, I don't my, my first tricks weren't anything even to to write home about, but the the point was I was trying to fool my brother. That was my main goal. He got me and I need to learn something I can get him back with. And uh, that took about 15 years. Uh, and I'm not even exaggerating. For 15 years, I showed him tricks. And he would always just say, oh, you, that's I saw it. That's how you, you palm that card. Or you know, <laughs> show me show me the rest of the deck kind of, you know, that kind of thing. And um, I was like in my early 20s when I showed him a trick once. And he, he just stopped. He didn't say anything. Finally got him, huh? He was dead silent. And afterwards, I was like, yes. And then the side effect of that was I ended up becoming a professional uh, magician. How hard is it to become a professional magician? Uh, well, I I don't think I'm built like other people. I, I have this desire uh, to, to just be the best, to, to work as hard as I possibly can, read as many books, hang out with the world's best uh, mag other magicians that have already done uh, you know, Darwin Ortiz is my mentor, considered one of the best in the world. Becoming a professional magician is about creating good material that people can't figure out, having a character that people like, and going out there and sharing and performing and putting yourself out there advertising so people know, I will come entertain and I'm going to be damn good at it. You know, you word of mouth, do a gig, have people come back, hand out business cards, and just build that up. I did all sorts of things uh, to help get myself out there. This is even pre-internet really you know what i mean this is this is doing events calling up event places and saying hey i i offer this service do you have events that i can do and come entertain at so you call up a, a convention center and talk to the person that does the events and that way when someone is holding an event and you say oh by the way would you like some entertainment for this event i have a great guy in town you know that kind of thing so word of mouth honestly that's what it was and then in 2013 i published my first book uh, and that really helps. That put me on the map for some credibility. And then in 2018, I published my second book. But I, I went full pro in about 2009 or so. Okay. Let me ask these questions. Get it out of the way. Are you closer to ramen noodles or mansions? <laughs> well, um, I make a very good living. Now, when I started out, it, you, you have to climb the ladder. You you have to climb the ladder. Uh, when my first corporate gigs were like 500 bucks back in the day. Uh, but now I do gigs for anywhere from five to $10,000, even more sometimes. So yeah, celebrities, it's, it's just, again, getting your, getting your word out there, getting your content out there, hitting a million followers on social media certainly helps. Uh, and like I said, celebrity endorsements, things like that, that's all credibility that helps a client want to hire you. How do you learn the tricks? That's the thing that books and from other people. There's other magicians out there that release books uh, that teach this stuff. And we all have a kind of a community that 
we share ideas and then it's uh, for me anyway i like to put my own spin I, I i take what that person wrote in a book and say how would i do this how can i change this to fit to fit me uh so that's in a very important thing uh when you're authentic um instead of just taking someone else's material and doing it note for note you know that that seems like such a like people are so fascinated by it but yet they never just read the book uh you have to put in a lot of time to it so it's kind of like nuclear physics we're, we're all fan we all wonder how does the galaxy work but do we buy all the books on it and read everything about deep space you know so it's a very similar point. concept it's all it's all out there but to put the time and energy into doing that is another thing what makes you good at it big difference between someone that just does cheap material easy to figure out that goes on a magic website and buys some stupid little gimmick that does it for you or someone that puts in the time the hours to learn sleight of hand so everything I'm doing is just a regular deck of cards and I'm moving my hands faster than you can see and I'm fooling you in that way. But in order to do it that way, it takes years and years, decades to learn how to do that. So a good analogy is, do you want to go to the gym every day and eat clean for years or do you just want to buy the t-shirt that has an ab six pack printed on it? People are obviously going to have more respect for the guy that put the time in to do that. And no one is going to go, wow, look at that t-shirt. Where'd you get that? <laughs> you know what I mean? So online, people can see that when I'm doing these videos, if I say the casino wash can't be beat, it's impossible. That's why casinos use it, the casino shuffling procedure. And then I proceed to do the wash, do the same shuffle, and then show the deck in complete new deck order. There's no gimmick that does that. You can't, you can't buy that in a, at a store. You have to learn how to do that over decades uh, worth of practice you know so that's that's the difference and i think people recognize that and when they, when they watch the videos and sleight of hand is there something that you could show me real quick that's like okay this is a basic sleight of hand is this a quick demonstration of sleight of hand a deck of cards you can see that i'm shuffling there's no doubt that these cards are changing position correct right right and so that's what your eye sees but i'm fooling your eye that's all Looks like I'm really shuffling, but you see, I can find an ace. Now, let me do that again. I'm not even looking what at that. What the fuck? Yeah, I'll give the cards a cut, just like the way they do in Vegas. You can see that that's a real cut. Cards come up the top, cards come up the bottom. There's a second ace. And again, too, people are going to say, oh, it's some sort of trick deck or something. No, nope. you can buy my books and see that this is all done with sleight of hand. Uh, so I'll give the cards another cut. Let me finish, because <laughs> there's a third one. Uh, there's only one more ace in the deck, so you know that this is the most difficult one of all. It's uh, going to be the most difficult, but I'll give the cards a cut because I do believe the last ace is right about there. So that's an example of sleight of hand. There's no other aces in the deck. That's an example of a sleight of hand. It looked like I was shuffling the cards. It looked like I was cutting the cards, but in reality, I was doing something behind the scenes. Another way to look at it is live special effects, right? I'm doing special effects for you right in person. So in a movie, you see them, they 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 intrigue you. They're amazing. We saw Harrison Ford drive a truck and it blew up, right? Yeah. Uh, it, it, but what's really happening is some movie magic to make it look that way because Harrison Ford really didn't get into a truck and drive it into a gas tank and have it explode. But it certainly looks that way. So that's a, a decent analogy for it looks like I shuffled the deck. It looks like I gave the cards a cut. And it looks like I found those four aces. Do you have to, though, have for those kind of card tricks or sleight of hand tricks, right? Is there something that you need a physical characteristic, right? Like, I've got to be able to move my hands faster yeah, than anybody called, else. Yeah, it's called independence in fingers um, and a piano player. Same thing. When Anybody can play the piano. You just have to sit down and are willing to put in the time to learning finger exercises, scales, stay with it, the patience to continue to work at it. But uh, unless you um don't practice it's going to take a long much longer time to learn how to do that stuff but any student that sits down and practice it's like learning another language we all have that ability you just have to sit down and do it i know this is a big broad general question but in that sense like are most of the tricks that are being done are they super complicated or are they really just like it's a mix and i'll prove it at the end of our interview i'll show you something very okay simple. cool it yeah will yeah fool you. it will fool you i'm sure it will will fool you you'll be oh my god that's amazing and then i'll show you what happened and you're going to go that's it. So you can see, but it's, it's, a, they're not all that way. Right? They're not all created equal. Just because a song is very good doesn't mean that it's complicated. You can have very good songs that are still simple to play. 
now does the job entail a lot of traveling a lot of like what kind of, oh, of what course. is what is it like on a not a day to day but like on a on a basis as a job sure any good business plan means multiple sources of income so i keep my social media accounts cooking card magic by jason is the handle for any of them uh youtube instagram tiktok are my three big ones so you have to make content to keep those things alive uh, and that gets you more work because people see that stuff. And in the videos, I'm saying you can hire me live. Uh, so that's a huge advertisement. These videos get millions. There's one of mine that has 36 million views or something. That is an advertisement to hire me for your an event that goes out to 36 million bucks. That cost me what? Zero. It's a free platform. So that's a constant source of advertising your event. I also have two books out. I have DVDs. I have downloads. I have all sorts of content for specifically for magicians. So you can, a, a teacher of mine told me years ago, if you can make, learn how to make money when you're sleeping, you'll be fine. So he's covered that for me there. So I can not do anything for a month and I still have income waiting for me. Uh, but the fun ones for me, I don't care about getting up in the morning and making videos here to, to that's not the living I want. I want to go out and perform for real people. So that's that's where I focus uh, my energy. And what will happen is a client will reach out to me and say, hey, we're doing X, Y, Z event in in uh, the Bahamas was the last fun one that I did on some cruise. Uh, you can come down and do, can you, we'll fly you down. Can you do an hour's worth of material for our guests? I could forward that to my manager. My manager handles all the bookings, all the flights and all that. And next thing you know, I'm flying out of the country to do an event. And then that you just repeat that process. And that old school method I told you about at the beginning of word of mouth is still, that still works today. That's not like it doesn't work anymore. So those people know people that have parties and then you get another gig out of that. So my busiest season is October through like January or so. Uh, that's where most companies are having parties and things like that. So I will just be constantly flying around uh, and doing events during those are all private events during the summer months i like to do public shows we get a venue we go to a theater and we say i'm jason Ladani. here's my social media let's do a show look at this following i'm going to pitch my show at your venue let's get him here and we do that and last year we did la and chicago we sold out shows for two months or that's about four months three and a half months uh about two months in chicago about two months in la and we sold out uh 80 tickets a night two shows a week. It was fantastic. For people who kind of try to make it and don't in the industry, where do they usually get bogged down? They are just not doing, uh, the, the, they are, I don't want to say copying, but they're not being authentic. They're just doing what other people do. And you need to find your own thing, your own personality and just do that. So if I just had a social media account of me just cutting to four aces every day in different ways to, to, uh, Hip hop, lo fi hip hop track. Who, who cares? You need to get out there and show people who you are. And my whole thing is look at me, I'm the best. All right, pretty bold statement, right? But then I then I put content out there that proves it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to say I'm good because I know I'm good. And that triggers people and they love it. But if I were just to do that stupid thing I did with you where I cut to the aces by shuffling the deck, th okay, yeah, so you got to wrap it up in a you know, in a good way, you got to find a way to to deliver that in a way that people like. And that's where people go wrong in this business. Copycat material and not moving the bar forward. I'm doing things that no one's ever done in, in card magic. Just just kind of for my perspective, right? If you were to say when you look at either yourself or another person that's kind of on your level in terms of original stuff that you're doing. How much of how much like what percentage of your show is that? I, I have this. The name of my second book is called Game Changer for a reason, because card magic has not moved in in like a hundred years. It's just people doing the same stuff, and magicians as a whole, ninety percent, ninety five percent of magicians just keep doing the same thing. It's just this. This was invented a hundred years ago, and I'm gonna do it. Now, <laughs> and, and the opening line is, this is the oldest trick in magic. Oh, well, my God. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Move. Let's let's change it up. So I came into this industry and said, what's the new spin you can do? What is the new way to do this? And I've proved it in two books that are both that they're actually 
the first book is going to be in its third printing soon, believe it or not. And the uh, second book is going to be in its second printing already. So that's why it's called Game Changer. This has been done a million years, but now let's up it and do it this way. now. And uh, so when I do a show, 90, 95% of it is, is my, is my ideas. What, why is cards? So why are cards the most prevalent? Are they just the easiest to generally do slide at the end? Not so or? much. No, no, no. For me, I'm a card guy. So uh, for me, it's all I do in magic. There's lots of fields. There's lots of fields, but there's an accessibility to cards. I can go to CVS and buy this deck, but I can't go to CVS and buy a box that cuts a woman in half, you know? So, so the, the card magic, and anyone with four dollars has access to becoming a card magician on, on the internet. Yeah. Are you ready for some harder slash listener submitted questions? Wait, are we allowed to swear? You can, can swear. Can... Yeah, I just if it's <laughs> your the... first question is why is this guy such a dick? <laughs> <laughs> because I just my character. I play a character. I, I'm an actor, you know. So people think that I'm really this full of myself. And it's just like saying, go and finding Daniel Craig in a Whole Foods down in Kingston. He lives in like an hour from here. Imagine going into in a Whole Foods in Kingston and running into Daniel Craig and saying, you know, you killed that person in that movie. And you are a terrible person because he had a family, you know, like he's an actor, like let it go. So when I'm up there saying, in case you're ever wondering, uh, you know, like what's the point of me trying to be so humble when I'm so good at everything? That's a humorous line that i say that right. my character, yeah right but people some people think that i'm a person that just says i am the best in the world and everyone else is trash and that's all they see in my content every single video so there'll be some people that don't understand that and write in like you can't say that you're the best in the world you're not allowed to do that and it's like they're policing the internet so that's why i was curious to see what kind of questions that you may have uh, got <laughs> One of them may have been around that. Like, good, good. I, I, I love it. Did you try out different personas first, though, before you uh, kind of you went? Look at my material. Yeah, if you look at my material uh, from ten years ago, very dry. I'm still doing strong card magic, but the, the magic was most prevalent. Like that. That's my main focus. But the scripting around it was a little bit weaker. It was not not weaker. It's just not as not as boasting my own ego and, and things like that a little bit but not as much and then once i realized the audience has really enjoyed that i started to crank that up a little bit and have more fun so in other words the real me started to kind of come out where i just kind of say what i want um and i also uh my mentor darwin ortiz when you're learning it's okay to walk through the footsteps of your mentor so i was doing things similar to him but I grew out of his. Uh, so that's normal. If you're going to learn how to play piano, your piano teacher gives you Beethoven. You know, you're not copying Beethoven to be the next Beethoven. You're just playing a simple song that is already written for you. So I would do Darwin's material, Darwin's scripts and act similar to him. But I grew out of that within a, a couple of years because I wanted to be me. All right. well, I can on. see why that per that persona would work. Right, though, because people would either accept it like, yeah, that's the best man or it would piss him off. And either well, way, online, is good. Online, people get pissed off, and they have the right to do that. At my shows, people love it. They're they're, they're paying to come see me, so that there's no at a live show. I never have anyone that's like, you know, do it with the cards face up, or bet you can't do this, or you know, it's like you're watching it live, so you know it's real. And people just accept when I say I'm the best in the world. Name any card you want, I'll cut it out of the deck instantly. And someone from the crowd says the Queen of Hearts, and I cut it out instantly. What are you gonna What are you gonna say? What are you gonna like say, I did, right? I just proved w what you wanted me to do, so you can sit down now. Or, or someone in the middle of a trick will say, "Let me shuffle." Now that's not an, a heckler; that's someone asking a question. So I say, "Sure," and they shuffle, and then I do the trick anyway. <laughs> I mean, what are you gonna say? So that's that. Pete, the audience loves that, and and it all boils down to this: I know I'm good. I'm allowed to say that. And audiences love that when I do that stuff and then prove it. They just they just love that. Here's a guy that's devoted his life to it. He's good. And no one's going to get in his way. And there's something about that that people really enjoy. What do you think it is about magic that people are really just like have that visceral reaction? Well, because there's subtext there. The subtext is I know something that you don't. And there is this this word wonderment. How did you do that? How is that even possible? So if I 
put a card in your hand face down and then you name any card and i say look at it and it is that card there's there's mystery this one like that's not possible you're breaking the everyday rules and that, that or no other art form has that we can look at a painting and say wow that's amazing we can go listen to an amazing band that's amazing but it doesn't have the same feeling of wonderment when you when you're just completely lost and how is that possible that's a unique experience that magic offers where would you say like is it more popular than it was like where would you say on the ebbs and flows of things so is... every 10 years we do a a valley and a peak it goes away no one cares about it and then david copperfield brought it back and then it disappeared just went away nobody cared anymore and then david blaine brought it back you remember the abc specials yeah he brought it yeah. back and then it disappeared again and then america's got talent people started magicians started winning and they won over and over and over again so it's just back it's just it's just like anything else. Remember the big poker boom in 2008? Yeah. Hold yeah. Up. It was on TV. We were watching ESPN six hour shows of, of poker. You know, I had this big boom and now it's just dissolved. But no one cares anymore. But it will. It, so those things just kind of come and go. Where would you say in terms of the magic hierarchy, right? And I don't even know what that means. But where is kind of sleight of hand card magic? You know, like I think of. Is it below cutting people in half when the cut? Well, these are just different genres, very different genres. You can, you can say sports. Where is golf? Where is football? You know, it's hard to, it's apples and oranges. So um, in, in magic, there's stage illusion, right? That's the David Copperfield. That's the uh, Siegfried and Roy that's making lines appear, cutting women in half. I don't do any of that stuff. That's not my thing at all. There is parlor magic where you're standing on a stage and there's a hundred people and you or 50 people or whatever, and you perform things with silks and uh, doves and bird cages. You know, that's not my thing either. And then with their, there's close up magic. And that means that you're sitting right there. Like my perfect show is 20 people, you know, we're all just, I have a table and there's 20 people sitting around me and that's close up magic. And you can still do coins and cups and balls and things, but then a subset of that is card magic, close up card magic. So now it's exclusively just cards. So there's all these different, uh, uh, genres of magic, and I just happen to be in one of those. Uh, and it's difficult to rate which one's on top because they're all they're all different. You know what I mean? Yeah, that makes sense. It's not kind of the situation of like, hey, I want to be the richest musician or the richest magician in the world, and your mentor would say, Jason, well, you got to do this. Yeah, got... and what's funny is other magicians will preach. This is why I ended up doing what I'm doing. Other magicians will preach that you can't make it as a card magician. In order to make money, you need to do all sorts of variety of things. I heard that one for decades, decades. But magicians love to put other magicians down. It's very, you know, any niche will have that. Um, so I felt it was very rewarding to to shut them up and do what I do in just cards and having a following this big, hitting 1 million followers doing just card tricks. I mean, that's unheard of. So, uh, but if you're good, you're good. How many decks of cards do you have? I have about 12,000 decks. That behind me is only about three, 2,500, 3,000 decks. Um, there is a particular brand of cards that is casino quality. They're perfectly made. They're, they're the same ones that you would find in a casino. So there's no, uh, the, the quality control is great. There's no bad edges or miscut cards and cards that, uh, don't lie the finish isn't messed up and all that and there's one particular maker of those cards and they were made once and never to be made again and i went and bought them all up because i want to make sure that i continue to use that brand that i'm comfortable with uh, bicycle rider backs they're they're these uh they're just really well made um and then some other companies are just poorly they're just they don't have the same quality control uh, which means you can get a defective deck or things like that. So that's why I honed in on one brand and just bought them all up. Well, you run into situations where like, oh man, if it's an old deck or if it's not a well-made deck, throw no, it No, because I practice with those as well. So on that shelf is a variety of everything you're talking about behind me. Uh, uh, the, the very top is like collector decks. Under that is semi-used, new, but kind of used. Underneath that is moderately like pretty worn in and then underneath that is completely destroyed decks of cards and i practice with all of those so that i'm never in a situation where somebody hands me an old deck and i say oh i can't perform with that 
I've got experience practicing with older decks. But if you only did one type of deck, like I only work with brand new, if somebody gave you an old one, would that could that throw a magician off? No, 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 no. no. Well, most probably, but no, not because I just said I practice with old decks. I do my whole show with an old deck just to make sure that I can do it. I'm assuming this has happened. So I'll ask this question in this way. But last time somebody figured it out. I can tell you it was June of 2009. <laughs> it was the last time somebody caught me red-handed. I was performing for two women at an event and I turned to this woman and I did something amazing. I made a card appear in her hand, you know, and I turned to this woman and started to do the second half of the trick. And in the middle of that, this woman over here said something I won't repeat because I, I don't, I just won't repeat it. It's not that it could be bleeped out. She just said something sexual in nature. And it caught me off guard because it, she went over over the line quite a bit. And I just turned back to her in disbelief. I said, what? And the woman on my left reached up and said, what is this? <laughs> and she pulled the card right in my hand. So palming is a thing. You palm cards. Palming is a magic secret. You can secretly hide cards in your hand. And if you think about the design, I'm supposed to talk to this woman. And if I'm if I'm turned this way, nobody can see the thing. There's, there's nobody behind me. It's my body's here. So nobody can see this card. But because I turned back to address this woman, like, <laughs> oh, what, she what, got without it. Yeah, no hesitation. She reached in and said, what is this? And it was kind of great. It's I mean, I mean, what am I going to do? Get mad? You know, it, we all laughed. It's hilarious. Uh, so that was the last time that I got really busted hard like there i have i got nothing but moving <laughs> forward people can say things i think you did it this way but that doesn't mean they're right that's just a myth that's just in their minds so i don't have to worry about shutting people down like when i put a deck back into order people always oh, switch decks well they can think that but the rest of the audience is smart enough to know that those cards never went out of you so it's it, it it's it's very difficult for the audience to say I figured that out because it's just a, it's a theory in their minds. That's all. Yeah. If you don't acknowledge it, right. It's kind of, well, like... the other thing too, is it's reliably, this is my favorite part. Reliably. When someone says that in the audience, the person sitting next to them or around them will always remind them of a condition that I had, had done. They'll say, Oh, well, you had those cards in order. You set those cards up. And the, the husband says that. And the wife says, but Bill, you shuffled them before you started. And then Bill got the God, whatever. He undid my shuffle. You know, like, so I, what I told you about with the avenues, I'm putting things in place that will ultimately prove this is impossible. That's my job. That's what I do. So when you try to reconstruct it, I've already taken care of all of that. And that's why you won't be able to figure it out. Last time somebody thought you were really doing magic. There's been a few, depending on how much alcohol they've had in them, I've had a few people that just are saucer eyed after the trick and put the cards down and say, I'm not into, I don't want to watch whatever the hell you do. I don't understand it. And they walk away. That to me, that is just great. Man, never had somebody like the devil, get the devil out. Oh my of them, right? God. I have a YouTube comment. One of my favorite YouTube comments. Yeah. Clearly you've sold your soul to be able to do the things that you've done. And I have pity on you and I will pray for you and all this. And it's like, and the comments like this long. So any, they're going to pray at their church for me and all that, because obviously I've, I've, I've done in some sort of dark deal with the devil and because no one should be able to possess these kinds of skills. I mean, or it could be practice. <laughs> What's your personal favorite trick? Uh, that changes. So it's kind of like, what's your favorite song or what's your favorite movie? Impossible to to answer that because there's so many. I probably know two, three hundred tricks total. Um, it's about the tricks that get the best reactions. That's how I judge my tricks. I may love it for a particular reason because it has a move in it or because it has a concept or because it has rewarding sleight of hand. To be able to pull something off in front of a person and get away with it, it feels like a heist. Like you robbed the bank, you got away with it. It's very rewarding feeling. Um, however, how I grade tricks is the reactions when people just flip out. And when I perform, I'm constantly bringing in new material and getting rid of old material or bringing back old material, like things I used to do 10 years ago, bringing them back because I like those reactions. So, um, I have plenty of performances on YouTube 
uh, the My Magic Castle set is on YouTube. Where you can watch a full uncut. It's all one take. Uh, a full set, 20 minutes, where you can watch me do tricks there. And the very last one in that Magic Castle set. So if you search YouTube search Ladani Magic Castle, you'll find it. And uh, that last trick is just so much fun to do and gets great reactions. And Ladani is L-A-D-A-N-Y-E for anybody yes, who's is. just listening to the, the audio version of it. Um, What's the easiest trick to do? What's the hardest trick? Um, so the easiest trick I'll show you at the end, uh, when we get into the demo, so I'll show you something very easy. That's effective. And then, uh, like I said, if you want to know the hardest, that YouTube clip of the magic castle, that the last 10 minutes, there are easily the, the most difficult trick that I've got to do. How much will you generally have to practice a trick? Like how many hours would you say that you put into it? This before is going to sound ready? terrifying, but there are tricks that I have practiced for literally three, four years before actually doing them in front of people. Um, it's just, I, I can't mess up. My character doesn't allow for me to make mistakes, which means that it has to be, it has to be perfect before it comes out in front of people. Um, so I typically practice two, four, six hours a day, sometimes more. Um, I take some days off from time to time, but it's a full-time job. I sit there and go over old tricks, moves. Uh, I'm constantly putting things online. Uh, content, which means that I have to practice for that stuff as well. And then also I can watch my own content and see what do I need to improve? Like I didn't, I could have done that better or things like that. So I'm always fine tuning that stuff. Uh, so that's uh, for the last 35 years, it's been four to six hours a day. Last question before we kind of get into some demonstrations. If some, what would advice would you give to the next you? Um, you mean miss things that I've kind of didn't get right, that kind of thing? Things are like advice that somebody who wants to kind of get into the business, like it, if mentor. Um, really. Don't the don't you don't have to share your ideas with everybody. I have a very tight circle of people that I share those secrets with that learn that. I, so all the things that I'm doing on TikTok that are fooling people, there's five people that know how that stuff's done, and earlier back in even 2015 2017 in that neck of the woods i was sharing some of that material with outside people i do a magic convention or something and share some of those ideas and those ideas just ended up on their youtube channels or their social media accounts without credit that kind of stuff so you don't have to uh, this is a classic thing if, if i invent the new car that runs on water i don't have to go out and tell everybody <laughs> and then bitch 10 years later that now everyone's driving a car that runs on water you know it's it's not it, i think it's my ego almost that got that made that that made that happen so uh that's what i would say once you start creating your own content your own concepts and your own things just keep it to yourself but can you figure out any other magician's tricks like can you look at it and be like oh that's most, how they're doing most of the time yeah i can uh, there's only a handful of people that can fool me and their names are mike vincent tony cabral andrew wimhurst Jack Carpenter, Darwin Ortiz, uh, those guys will constantly fool me. And I love it. That's my inner circle. Those are the guys that I share all my ideas with. Is there somebody that you would say that 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 magicians as a whole, right? You know, the LeBron, Michael Jordan con conversation that would say, that's the best. Well, me, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Besides yourself, somebody that people would look at and be like, you know, there, uh, there are a few names in our industry. Mario Lopez and uh, Danny Diortis, uh, fantastic, fantastic performers that are constantly wrecking everybody's brains. And me included. Sometimes I see things that those guys do and I'm just like, I, I don't know how what he's doing. It's got to be tough then, right, to fool somebody. Um, I know we're kind of running short on time. Uh, could you show us a couple of things real quick? Uh, you can see the Mac, correct? Um, so we'll do something very, very simple. Pick a card trick. And before we begin, and this is the, a simple card trick, I'll fool you with it. And then I'll run through it a second time and teach you, uh, what I did so that if you're listeners, you have a mixed audience of people that listen. Yeah. Audio. Yeah. Listeners in audio, my video, um, audio, video, give the cards a couple shuffles and what's going to happen is I'll be selected card. You've heard that line, pick a card before, correct? Yep. So as if you were here, you could take any card you want. But since you're not, I'll just run my finger like this. Just say stop whenever you want. I'll say stop right there, about two-thirds through the deck. 
All yeah, right, now was... we stopped at a few. So one, two, or three. Just so we're clear, it's not. I didn't make you pick a card. You want this one, this one, or this one? One, two, or three? Uh, the one, two. Oh shoot, that one. One. This. Yep. All right. So the whole point is, I couldn't have known ahead of time that you were going to select this card. So if again, because of Zoom, I know what the card is. If you were here, you could just look at it and remember without showing me. But the whole point is, it doesn't matter if I know what it is. It's that we don't know where it is. We'll place that card on top and give the cards a cut like this. So it's buried somewhere in the middle of the deck. Now, if you were here, you could cut the cards. So where would you like to cut near the top, middle, or bottom? Uh, let's cut uh, two thirds of the way through the deck. And so can deep, I tell? Look how deep that cut is. All right. Now I'd have you cut the cards again. Where do you want me to cut the cards now? Top, middle, or bottom? Uh, let's do towards the top. So look at this, just a few cards. So see, every single time you cut, it would change. Now, if we were at a big table here with other people, which is where I perform, which I uh, prefer to perform with a big group of people, I'd hand the cards to somebody else and they would cut. There's no trickery. Even though I'm cutting the cards here, this would be other people cutting the cards. And at this point, how many times do you think that this deck has been cut? And you can oh, see it in all different places every time. Of course, sometimes near the top, sometimes near the middle. And sometimes near the bottom. Look at that. How many times do you think you've cut these? Oh, at least half a dozen, probably more than that. Maybe now. even more, close to 20, probably. Yeah, now, we're getting up there. The cards are really being mixed. So I can show you this way. Look what's on top a four. And if I cut the cards like this, you can see now it's a queen. You can see that the cuts are genuine. As a matter of fact, to prove that the cuts are real, <laughs> you can face up. Now, let's have you do it a few times. Go back to you one more time just to prove it's real. Where do you want me to cut? Top, middle, or bottom? Uh, let's do the middle. Uh, middle, and then let's go to the, let's do the middle again, actually. Oh, we keep getting that king. Let's cut to someplace else. A different How? king. <laughs> Where else? Keep going. Let's go to the top. Keep going. You tell uh, me. Let's, let's go all the way to the bottom. What's the second to the last oh, card? Second to last? The six of spades, right? So the whole point, how many times do you think, now that we're done, how many times do you think in total we've cut these cards? Oh, more than 20. Way more than 20. Is there any person on the planet that could say where that card is right now? Your original card, the three of diamonds. I would say that it's probably going to be you, but nobody <laughs> should be. Nobody should be able to. It's it out. Nobody can do it. But if anybody could, it would be me. Now, at this point, we have finished cutting and it's the eight of hearts that we stopped at. Right. Yeah. I don't know how many times you cut, but we stopped at an eight. And if we had kept going, it would have been a different number. If we did less, it would have been a different number. But ultimately... I asked you, was it okay to stop here? You said yes. Eight of yes. hearts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is the eighth card, which happens to be your You got to be kidding me. <laughs> this is actually really easy to do. So would you like to learn? I promise you yeah. some simple card tricks. Yeah. Yeah, so I'd love to see it, how you did now, it. Now, this is what you had said earlier. Right now, there's wonderment. You're experiencing wonderment in the sense that you picked any card that you wanted. It was cut into the deck probably 45 times we cut those cards. So how could we stop at any card, any card, which was an eight, and how could that card be eight cards down? It's not possible. That's the part of your brain that you're just wondering. How right. is that possible? Now you'll see that when you learn it, it's going to pop that bubble. But watch, let's check it out. Spread the cards out. And can you tell me what's at the bottom of the deck? Uh, Ace of hearts. Then? God dang it, dude. How did, how did you just... <laughs> so all the cards are somehow now in order of Ace of hearts, Two of hearts, Three of hearts, Four of hearts, Five of hearts. All the Holy. way up to 10. Okay. And it yeah. stops after 10. So all if you want to do this trick, you simply organize the face cards, ace through 10, in order. That's it. Very easy to do. Okay? The rest of the deck is genuinely shuffled. There's, there, there's no rhyme or reason behind any of these cards. Then these go at the face of the deck. Now, here's a very basic card control. At the beginning, do you remember I shuffled the cards? Yeah. Well, I am shuffling which would destroy the ace through 10, correct? Right. However, you can see that by simply letting these cards fall first, it does not impact those cards. But it's very difficult to see that from the top. So this is an example you were asking earlier, like what is sleight of hand? Well, the answer is you can't see it. You can't yeah. see sleight of hand. So when I shuffle these cards again, you still can't see it. Those look like genuine shuffles. Look at them get pushed together. It does look like. So for it people is. just... for it people. Is. 
a true shuffle. It's that it partially is not true. So lawyers use this stuff all the time. They ask you yes or no questions that aren't really yes or no answers. They do that all the time. And that means that they're able to build a case. And, and even though that's not truly 100% yes or truly 100% no. So I'll give you an example. Was this deck just shuffled? Do you see how it's not a yes or no? Right, right. Like, Part yes, it deck. was shuffled, but it wasn't really shuffled. Exactly. Not the way that, yeah. But lay people see things in yes and no's. So when I shuffled the cards five times before we started, we know what? The deck must be shuffled. Yeah. So that's not necessarily true. Okay. Now, the next part, watch how I'm manipulating you uh, in this fashion. I say you can pick any card you want. In a moment, I'm going to spread the cards like this, and you can say stop whenever you want. Now, I have finished speaking, and look where my finger is. You've it's are, already oh, passed these God. cards here, which means you can't pick any of those. But doesn't it feel like you had a choice of any card that you wanted? It did. It but did. you've but already, but yeah, I I'm see it. Still talking, since I'm still talking, you're not going to get access to these cards here. So watch it again, and you don't realize you're being manipulated, but you are. In a moment, I'm going to have you take any card that you want. I'm going to run my finger like this. Just say stop whenever you want. Go ahead. So if you said stop immediately, it would be this card, and it would not be near my ace through 10. See how that works? Right. So you, again, so you're... That's that sleight of hand, but that is manipulation of your, your choice, right? So anyway, it doesn't make a difference what card you select. Let's say you pick this one. This card goes on top of the deck. Well, that's a coincidence. Three of diamonds, it's the same card. You know, sometimes I'll fool you with the easy stuff. Sometimes I'll fool you with the hard stuff. The three of diamonds, that's the card you selected, goes on top of the deck, and I give the cards a cut like this. But you can see that when you cut the cards, it will never change ace through 10 and your card. The ace through 10 simply moves around the deck, but it doesn't get out of order. So see when I give the cards a cut in any position, when I spread the cards, ace through 10 just happens to be here. Now, if I cut into the middle of ace through 10, it still doesn't make a difference. Do you see how the two is at the bottom? Yeah. Well, the two is here, but look at the top of the deck. The ace and the three are up there. Oh, I so, see. No, it doesn't make a difference when you give the cards a cut. So that wonderment bubble just pops. See how what just happens? You just right. realize that the cutting has no impact on anything, right? The top right. part is changing, but the ace through 10 is not changing. Now, when we do it face up, guess what I'm looking for? Any heart, any heart. When I hit that ace through 10 right here, the moment that I hit that, that's the end of the trick. Because right now, the three of diamonds is nine cards from the top. If I had cut here, it'd be eight cards from the top. If I cut here, it'd be seven cards. So whatever heart you find from ace through 10, whatever heart it is, that's where your card's going to be on the other side of the deck. Does that make sense? It does, right? Yeah, right? Like so all you do is cut until you find an ace or any ace through ten of heart and the trick's done. So in this case, I would stop here and then ask you how many times have we cut? About 30, 40 times. And we ended up at this six. So turn this deck down, pull the six out, and now watch the magic happen. Six cards from the top. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. You so yeah. You're yeah, I get it. Now, you, uh, here's an example of something much more complicated. Uh, so I want you in a moment to name any card this way. You can name anything, but don't name the ace of spades because uh, I've done this before and people always say, oh, well, everybody probably says the ace of spades, you know? So when we're done with this, I don't want you to think that. So uh, it can be any card uh, that you want in the deck. Uh, guys, think of the... Uh, jack of spades king of spades women think of the queen of hearts queen of diamonds just think of something or name something that i could not possibly have anticipated let me know when you've got it in mind uh i'm gonna go the eight of clubs eight of clubs now you realize of course that you could have named anything i want to make sure that the eight of clubs isn't on top of the deck if it was i would just shuffle the cards again i want to make sure the eight of clubs isn't on the bottom of the deck all right, all right. now that we know the eight isn't on the top of the bottom i'm going to show you something very interesting with two jokers and if you were here, you could examine these jokers, but uh, you'll have to take my word for it. We only have two uh, jokers. And like I said, a guarantee joker and a regular joker. But if you were here, you could look at these. So I just want you to make sure you can see that these are individual playing cards. Can you see that this is just one playing card? Yes, it appears to be. 
it is. No, I, I can't. Like I said, if you were here, you could feel it, but I can't stress anymore. Yeah, it's definitely one. It's one card. And then same thing with this one. There's only one Joker here as well, correct? Yep. All right. Now, is there anything in between these Jokers right now? Shall I come up to the camera? Was there anything in between? There is nothing in between. Well, nothing yet. I mean, the Eight of Clubs is simply going to materialize. But right now, there's nothing, correct? Correct. How about now? Not yet. Well, how about now? No, I'm getting nervous. How about anything? No. Watch, do not blink, because in an instant, one card simply materializes in between the Jokers. And it happens to be. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> so that's an example. That's an example of there's no trick to it. Uh, I'm doing it. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, let's try uh, one more to finish up. Um, with these complicated ones. So Holy shit, ones. man. So yeah. for people who are listening, basically he the card literally just magically appeared. It quite literally appeared out of thin air in 4K in front of you that you named any one of the 52 cards uh, in the deck. All right, I just shuffled these. Uh, do you want me to shuffle them again or cut them or leave the way it is? Uh, after the last one, man, I don't trust your shuffling anymore. Let's leave it the way it is. Okay, the, and and... and after the cards are shuffled, they have to be cut. You're saying to ignore the cut as well or give them a cut? One cut, middle of the deck. Good? Yeah, yeah. I will put these back in the box. And what we're going to do is write a number on the back of this. But you have the choice. Last time you got to name any card. This time you get to name any number. One through 52. What would you like? Oh, I'm a fan of 13. And, and do you think that that's a common card or you want to change at the last second? You know, I don't want afterwards you say, oh, everybody probably thinks of 13. But you can stay with that. I mean, that's up to you. In other no. words, I'm just giving you a chance to change your mind. If you want to commit to 13, that's fine. Can I change to 27? At the last second, 27? Yes. 27. 27 it is. Now, this is very important because later I want you to realize that you did have a chance. You had did two different numbers. You had a chance to go with uh, 30, or excuse me, what was it, 13? 13, And at yeah. the last second, uh, you changed to 27. All right. Now, this deck, uh, I will give the cards a shuffle and a cut. Would you like me to shuffle and cut these again or leave it the way it is? I'm okay with it the way it is. I'm okay with it. And you realize, of course, that we have 52 different cards. Sometimes people think that it's all the same card or something like that. Not the case at all. And in a moment, I'll spread through like this. If you were here, you could touch any card that you want, but you're not here. So I'll just spread like this. And you say stop whenever you want. We'll stop at that card. How about right there? Okay. Now, same thing as before. I, I gave you the chance to change the number. Do you want to change the card or commit to this card? There's a lot of cards left. So commit to this or change your mind at the last second. I'm going to commit this time. 100% commit. 100%. Commit? Without 100%. going out of focus, nine of hearts in this case. If you had stopped one card earlier, would have been the uh, king of spades. One card later would have been the ten of spades. You had access to all of these cards, any one of these cards. But the one card that you stopped me at happened to be the nine of hearts. Yep. All right. Nothing in my hands, right? Yeah. A lot of people ask how these tricks work, and honestly, it's... It's not years and years of practice and sleight of hand. It's just luck. I've been getting lucky. Like the, when I showed you the aces thing, it just so happened I got lucky with four aces on the top. Uh, and how amazing is it that it happened during a podcast? So let's try this. <laughs> I'll open this deck up and no sleight of hand, nothing in my hands at all. I'm not palming anything. I'm going to count down to the 27th card. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now, at this point, you know what's going to happen. You just can't believe it. But watch. I no know. sleight of hand. I'm just dealing. That's 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. This is, in fact, the 27th card in the deck, and it just happens to be the nine. Huh. <laughs> That's so good. That is just something that you are going to have to lay awake at night in agonizing pain, wondering what? how in the fuck did he do that? Right.